don't panic. Those tiny little spots in the corners, how could they be so high? Well, they're just stress singularities. Small regions where the FEA predictions are completely wrong and the math um, failed. I mean, what reason could there be for concern? <laughs> stress singularities are very common and no problem if handled correctly, if. On the other hand, untamed singularities might cost you money. They'll add weight to your structure. See, much like cancer, safe stress singularities center on recognition and proper treatment. We don't throw out the whole body when we have a few bad cells in cancer. Similarly, an FEA analysis is perfectly trustworthy even with stress singularities once we properly understand them. So what on earth is a stress singularity? Well, there are small sections of an FEA model where the reported stresses will go higher and higher. They go far beyond any of the nearby geometry. Now, I want you to examine the high stress regions and the two figures below. Notice the sharp rise in stress at the corners of a square hole. And notice that with a smaller mesh size, the problem only gets worse. This is the key characteristic of stress singularities. They rise to infinite stress. When you keep making the element size smaller, they keep getting higher. Sharp structural changes frequently generate these stress singularities. These can be uh, cracks, corners uh, where two plates meet together, right angles of a hole, uh, maybe even welds depending on how you've modeled it. In any event though, they're not real only in accuracies in the FEA solution. You can safely ignore a singularity. Ah, but here's the rub. Singularities also occur in regions that would experience natural stress concentrations. Stress concentrations are a problem. That's how you tear steel. You need to check and ensure that each of these hotspots are a true singularity. How do you detect a singularity? Now remember, FEA singularities occur in places that also would create stress concentrations. So they could be one or the other. The best way to detect a singularity is to study how it behaves with successive mesh refinements. A stress singularity should be concentrated in one cell near the corners, and you're gonna see them very often on plate elements. So you want to get a report of the stresses for those few cells that are showing hotspots and plot how the stress varies against cell size at that corner. For a stress singularity, that stress is going to continue to rise without convergence. That's the key element there. So as you refine the mesh, it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. The stress never tapers off to some finite value. Take a look at this figure. As the element size moves down to zero, the slope of the plot keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper. At this rate, it's going to curve right up to infinity, a vertical line. So if it never converges, you have a stress singularity and you can ignore it. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I want to ignore something, I feel a little more comfortable first understanding why it happens. This is going to be tough. To truly explain singularities, I need to first explain some of the math behind FEA. The FEA solver calculates the deflection of every node on the FEA mesh. That's the actual physical distance that each node moves under load. Lots of math pours into ensuring the solver gets that answer correct. But what we often want is the stress. The stress then derives from that solution. We need to remember that stress comes from the gradient of the deflection. That's the change in deflection from one node to the next. And we're going to need some specialized math to calculate that gradient of deflection. So to calculate that gradient, we need to use something called shape functions. Within every FEA element, we have a set of generalized math functions to describe how the stresses and deflections vary from one node to the next. These are called shape functions, and they are a whole science of their own with lots of options. They're at the heart of every FEA code and they're not easily changed from one scenario to the next. And unfortunately, there's no perfect shape function that works for everything. So the software developers typically are going to pick a shape function that works for most of the applicable scenarios. These shape functions sometimes have a downside. 
they get a slope discontinuity going from one element to the next. That slope discontinuity is the root problem that causes stress singularities. See, stress depends on the slope of the shape function. That's the gradient. And if the slope is completely different at either side of the node, what value should you take right at the node? Well, software developers created some pretty clever ways to smooth out this discontinuity. But for a few locations, that smoothing math just doesn't work. Those calculations involve at some point dividing by the distance between the centers of those two adjacent elements. Now, as the elements get smaller, those distance between centers get smaller and they come closer and closer and closer together. But we still have a discontinuity. So the smaller distance exaggerates the slope discontinuity. If the elements were to get infinitely small, you would have zero distance between element centers. And that really exaggerates the discontinuity. It's annoying, but it's predictable from the theory of shape functions. Stripped down to the essentials, stress singularities are just a quirk of FEA mathematics. Well, given all of that dizzying theory, is FEA even still reliable? I know it feels a little disconcerting to state that FEA has known points of error, but somehow we should still trust it. In truth, you should never blindly trust FEA. Neither will the engineer running the analysis. Neither did the software developers who created the FEA. They ran something called a patch test, which is a numerical test to ensure these local discontinuities do not alter the global solution. See, the developers just didn't blindly ignore these stress singularities. They ran their own tests to ensure that these small errors will not affect the overall physics of your structure. The rest is on the engineer running the FEA analysis. They will interrogate each one of these stress singularities to make sure that they behave like singularities and can be safely ignored. The guarantee comes from the engineer, not the software. Don't trust the FEA, but do trust your engineer. The engineers are trained to recognize stress singularities and run tests to detect them, just like a doctor eliminating cancer. Now, once properly identified, the engineer has several tools to handle singularities. That's part of the quality assurance that engineers perform to make sure the FEA is reliable. Under proper supervision, these few bad spots will not discredit the rest of your simulation. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Congratulations! You have joined an elite club, the few and rare that make it to the end of the video. Now, if you'd like to go one step further and join the rarest of the rare, the most elite of all, all you have to do is perform this task. Click like or subscribe and let me know how awesome you are.